What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Live Composing Show. This is Stephen Malin, music composer for stories. So I have to admit that YouTube fooled me today. I thought that if I would come back to the same room that I'd be able to use the same video here on YouTube, but apparently there is a timeout. I think it's like 10 minutes. I was gone for about 30 minutes, so whatever. I had to start a new video, but we'll call this one part two, even though it's the same day, whatever. Not a big deal. So um, welcome back to the show. Today we are scoring live the DC Stargirl scene as part of the Spitfire Audio scoring competition, very similar to last year's Westworld scoring competition. I'm very thankful, though, that this is a much simpler scene than the Westworld one, and it's way shorter. It's only two minutes long. I think they learned from last year that, you know, four minutes of audio is just insane when you have thousands of these to review, and, you know, I'm sure that they they got smart about cutting it down, Um, and it's, you know, just an easier process for everybody. Um, so I hope if you guys are considering doing this competition that you'll jump in and hopefully today I've been able to shed a little bit of light on at least my process and my philosophy behind not only competitions, but scoring for film in general, scoring for film is a little different. You have to approach it a little bit more, um, intentionally because if you make a mistake in film scoring, the whole thing is ruined and you have to start over versus something like a game or um, a podcast or something where it's a little bit more fluid. Um, Each medium has its own challenges for sure. But anyway, let's jump into the film and hopefully within the next hour or so we can wrap this party up. Did not expect to get this done so quickly, but I feel like the 45 minutes or so we've already spent on this, I feel like I got the structure, I got the skeleton, and it helped that I started by crafting the sound which is, I think it's really important to find some way to be inspired anytime you're writing music. Because if you don't have inspiration, then you just kind of, it feels like a chore. And I feel like in this instance, I really wanted to nail two things. I wanted to get some kind of theme that would represent Stargirl and use little snippets of that theme. Because this is in the middle of episode four or five, I believe, of season one. So it's just kind of, you know, it's a random scene and it doesn't have much context. So it's important for us to use, you know, an imaginary main theme, which I was playing earlier. Oops, let me, uh, let me turn off the crazy effects and, and then I can actually play this piano. I think he doesn't like that. Something very simple that I think could be a, a huge main theme for the show. And so by, by taking that, I now have some musical fragments that I can use uh, in different moments. And there's one moment in particular right here when she holds up her staff. This is like her straight up using her powers to use sunlight to blind I guess to move the bus whatever she's actually doing I don't know Um, but by doing this it's like that's the moment so if anyone is using doing this competition like hit this moment really hard with whatever your main theme is but don't go over the top because in a real situation you wouldn't do that you wouldn't just throw like a, a 10 note melody instead I'm using a three note Now, of course, it doesn't sound good like that, so instead I threw some B2, which is a chorus reverb, and went wild with that to turn my piano into a pad. And then I threw some pretty insane EQ on there as well to really heighten the mids and to cut off completely the lows and the highs. So then it sounds like this. It's this big ethereal moment that's kind of a callback to the main theme and I did the same thing here Bum, ba, dum. just it leaves space you gotta leave space for the dialogue for the sound effects there's nothing worse than there's nothing worse in film or tv than overriding, like putting too much music, too much melody, too much, eh. it's like 
the purpose of music is to support the picture, not to crowd it or overdo it. So yes, the music should work on its own, like a soundtrack, but it should also have a lot of space for what's happening in the picture. So if you put them together, here's what I have so far. Let's play the scene, and then we will continue producing. The bus! <laughs> Cool, I like the direction we're headed. There's a couple timing issues I wanna correct. And then second, I wanna produce some of those emotional moments to have even more weight. Um, in particular, I noticed, I didn't notice this till this last playthrough that my, my timing's way off at the end. Um, let me play just the movie. Because I have a feeling that there's, there's like, I now see what's actually happening is he is getting hit or we're led to believe he's getting hit because of this card is all by itself. And obviously their faces are kind of the look of horror. So I like having the ambient pad stuff up top that kind of escalates that feeling. But um, if I'm not mistaken, there's a sound effect that he's gotten hit. Joey! Yeah, so there's that hit. And all the screams. So we need to emphasize that a little bit better. So this whole rise, I just need to play with it a little bit more. So I think it's this thing. I'm way off. Thanks so much, Daniel, for subscribing. I'm going to redo this part. I'm actually gonna sometimes I like to have two tracks duplicated that way I can kind of stack stack them on top of each other um, that way I don't have to lose the old data and hello Marie hello Queen Oreo and by the way Oreo asked a great question in the chat said am I planning to do the live stream tomorrow at the normal time Thursday 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time not this week this week shifting some things around for some family schedule because it's summer and we like to go out and do things. Um, so I have to be ever so flexible every every once in a while. So no stream tomorrow. That's why I'm doing a little bit of a, a double today. Anyway, let's, uh, I think we're ready. sounds there all right let's record this thing i gotta get my camera centered <laughs> it's a little off <laughs> at least you can see what the heck i'm doing up there my poly d which is uh it's a clone of the mini moog by moog but it also has 
some really cool additions. Um, I think it has the the chorus one and two from the Prophet five, and it's mono. mono I mean uh, polyphonic. It's kind of like pseudo polyphonic. It's actually four. What do you call that? Tetraphonic. Yeah, tetraphonic because you can play four notes at once. Um, unlike the mini mode, which only does one note, which is what they're known for. But anyway, it's a really cool synth. You should check it out. This was a mistake. We need to go. We need to find Icicle. it and then slide it over till it fits the picture because it's the right tempo the right pace everything i just need to move it till it fits perfectly with that car crash so let me try again So now we can go play with that till it fits. Because it needs to end right before. I also want to make sure that this uh, previous line does not get completely killed off there. So let's play with it. It's a cool little motif. And I'm not even using a click. I thought I would use click way more today, but I kind of like it off. Yes, yeah, so it's sending, my synth is sending MIDI and audio if I want to just keep the MIDI and then I can edit it as needed. So check this out. If I play just the MIDI, it'll still play and I can edit it if I wanted to. So cool. Also, one of the benefits of using the Poly D. Check it out. So it's actually playing through the scent over there, which is routed through audio. And I can still control it with my MIDI. Isn't that so cool? So cool. Technology is crazy these days. Crazy. Anyway. <laughs> Mm, I don't love There almost needs to be a silence What you guys can't hear anything? What do you mean? What do you mean? Oh, you don't you can't hear the MIDI because I didn't have the little sorry about that I'm supposed to click that little button there, the uh, record enable, or the uh, input monitoring. I'll do it again. Sorry about that. So here's just the MIDI. So if I wanted to play with that MIDI track. It's actually coming through the box. Super cool. So yeah, anyway. Oh, that live streaming is tough with sense because there's so many inputs and MIDI signals that you have to be careful what you're enabling. Ah. Anyway. 
So now you're hearing the audio, which is the burnt in. Joey! Maybe like right here. make a bigger deal about it. Joey! Now let me see what happens. What does it feel like to move it over? To where the last note's the car crash? This is why I'm not using a tempo. So I can slide crap like this. Is that too cheesy? Probably. Oh, it would help if I route everything to the appropriate spot. So let me do that. So over here, everything needs to be music. There we go. That way, when I da -da -da -da, when I do this thing, I take my group, which is my music group. I can go up and down, and now all the music. <laughs> think we're in business. Maybe. Here's what I need to do. I need to, ugh, why haven't I done this yet? I need to put a, a EQ on my synth. Cause it's a little too much. Let's feel that out. Parts up better. That's just MIDI, so I can actually take that and drag it so it lines up better. The audio. I want to start making this feel more epic and, and larger than life and superhero-esque, right? So, I don't know if I necessarily want to go into like choir territory, but that needs yada, something that's rrr, gives you the feels. Let's do it. What would do that? I think we need to go more into the synth territory. Um, let's experiment a little bit with zebra i like to mix synthetic like synths and analog 
because I don't want to screw with all my settings in case we need to go back and record some more bass stuff. Um, I'm just going to play around with zebra, melody, synth. So here we need something to mirror yada, but it needs to be really fat and and reverberant. <laughs> Maybe that. We'll put a filter on it so it's not so sawtoothy. So I'll do a something like this. EQ is your best friend when sculpting out sounds. All right, delay is a little much. So I'm gonna turn down the mix of that. this uh, bum, 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 a little bit less like the transition is still a little four bar four bar so I want to make sure there's some kind of glue that, that helps put those together the kids looking right at me Not for long <laughs> Tina Guo, the legend, the myth, fabulous human being. And fun facts, speaking of, this is not Marvel, but um, Wonder Woman. She did all the cello for every bit of that movie. She's Hans Zimmer's go-to cellist and Austin Winnery's. The kid's looking right at me. Not for long. hit the level of epic that I want yet. trying to line up my stuff all these different sounds i'll make sure that they have a very unified not an orchestra but like things move together like the bass needs to land when the pad starts you know thinking that this bass line it's really cool but it needs some kind of reverb that'll help i don't want anything crappy um 
Let me go back into this B2 territory. I don't want to overdo it, but let's try some things. That gives a simple space. Something like that that just gives a little bit more density. Keep trying a few more. Yeah, that one's a little bit better. I'll put it on both of the channels. Nothing fancy. I'm just trying to give more space. That way the cutoff is not so abrupt. Speaking of which, I need to tame that down with the audio with a little bit of a fade out. Whenever you have audio, try to fade in and out at the tails to give it more musicality. And even that one, I can really go in. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so here's what I really need to, to lean into. I need some sub hits, because I really haven't hit that low territory yet. So let's open up contact. Um, I'm a big fan of freebies. So for those of you who are big into free instruments with contact, I'm a contact programmer myself, so I totally get this. What is it called? Sub, sub hit. Um, I'm gonna show you some freebies that are really cool. I'll use them in everything trailers. This is not a trailer, but it's the same style. And it's um, Ava Instinct. Go grab it right now. It's a bunch of WAV files. If you just go to their website, Ava, AVA, you can grab their Instinct pack, which is literally, it's a bunch of WAV files. You can do what you want with them. And I've, I'm very savvy with contact, so I made my own instrument here, which is like my go-to trailer stuff. Um, here's the instrument. You can see it right there. And they have some sub hits, which are to die for. Okay, let me not break your ears. Sorry. I just uh, turned down that instrument a lot. Stuff like that is so cinematic. What's up, Marie, M.A., Aaron, welcome back, Martin, guys, Sariel, Matt, Robin, of course. What I'm looking for is a big fat one. That, that has a lot of attack. Yeah, that's really good because I had a lot of reverb baked in. So I'm going to take this sound. It's not good enough by itself because it's too much in your face. I'm just going to put an EQ on it. EQ does miracles. I'm going to rob all of that high data. I never like anything to pass under 20 because 20 hertz, that's where subwoofers start to like rattle. Uh, people with subwoofers and head good headphones are going to yell at you if you're sub hits are going below that point. So always stop at 20, find a good sweet spot. Now listen to it. Maybe you can't hear it if you're just listening on your phone, but it is like rumble, rumble. It is beautiful. And it also doesn't take up any of the high frequencies for all my cool synth stuff. So if we put that sucker right when she goes up, it should sound cool. The payoff. Isn't that so cool? Oh, I'm sorry, Marie, that you weren't notified of this stream. That sucks.
so simple. So, so simple. Now, because this is the year 2021 and we live in a hybrid world of electronic and orchestral, that's just kind of the landscape of cinematic music, it doesn't work yet because it doesn't have enough humanity. Because, yes, yeah, she's Stargirl, she has superpowers, but she's still a human. And so there's this, or at least any, we're on Earth, right? So we still need to represent with some kind of humanity. So I'm going to get some strings. Yeah! And it needs to really fill the space. Welcome, Gandalf. Welcome to your first live composing. I'm here every week, Thursdays, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This week, I'm off schedule, but I'm, I don't hear anyone complaining. <laughs> um, let's just keep it simple with strings legato. I really want some low strings. Let me show you some of my favorite strings here. And I have everything organized in contact because I use it every day of my life. It's important to have things organized or else you'll be searching for hours to find all your stuff. I like 8DO Adagietto for cinematic Hollywood style sound. They're ensemble strings. Uh, it's very inexpensive too, so it's a great, great find. I'd like to do... I'm going to go the extra mile here and do individual sections because it'll sound better. If you're just quick sketching, yeah, use the ensemble patches because they're it's, you know, everything layered together, but I'm gonna take the extra second here to load both and mix the microphones the way that I like them. There's no right or wrong way. Um, so you can see there it is, cello legato, and we're gonna do double bass legato. It's just a little bit, a little bit slicker to load the actual instrument instead of all the strings together. And yeah, Marie, we're still here, we're still here. I appreciate it. So here's the bases. And so now the goal is... Sounds really good. Um, but you can't just do that. We need to make a, a reverb. So not to go overboard here, but I'm going to add a track. You can do this in every single DIW. We want an... Mm -hmm -hmm, let's do a group. Groups are nice. We're just going to call it strings. That way, if I add any other strings, I can route them through this thing. So strings go here. You can't see that. Strings go here. It's just a, an aux channel if you're in Pro Tools or Logic or something. Uh, in Cubase, they're called groups. So it's simply that. And I go over to my other screen. And now we need to make sure that the cello and the bass are routed to the strings as their output. As simple as that. They just go into the strings. And then my strings, well, here's what we need to do. I need to create one more patch or one more uh, track. It's going to be called effects. And it's just, I'll call it orc reverb. That way it's its own track. And there it is. My computer knows that I like that. It's actually saved as a preset. So there it is. We'll put it on 20%. And now all I have to do is make sure that my strings section um, is going to be sent as a send to the orc reverb and I can choose the amount strings are very close in an orchestra so you don't want to go overboard so probably like negative 20 thereabouts if zero is 100% this is like uh, 50% something like that it's uh, exponential not logarithmic so anyway now we should when I play uh, my cello over here it's now routed to the strings, to the orchestral reverb. It's gonna sound really good when we double them up. Low strings, let's go. Let's give that a big power. Follow the synth line I've already written in the bass. Okay, I have to make it a 
decision. These do not line up yet. Which means we're late to the party. So let me move him back a little bit so he lines up. matters. This is like the big climax. production side. It's like we should come in. Yabba. Oh, cool. That's good to know. The robot is her dad. It's the guy inside. Um, the There's a... What's his name? Frost? Jack Frost. <laughs> Looks like Jack Frost. There's a, there's a character in here that's the actual antagonist. The guy who blows, blows eyes. The robot is pair, is on a team with Stargirl trying to save the bus. He just looks evil, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, I don't understand the, the meaning of the red eyes and whatever. Ah, uh, thank you so much, Aaron. Appreciate that, man. Kind words. 
think all the fun part is doubling that an octave lower. That'll give the power to this moment. Stop the strings there. Otherwise, it just feels too much. If you can even see, I have so many tracks now. There we go. That dumb <laughs> delay on the piano is like 30 seconds long. Hope you can still hear me talking on top of it. Um, so let's take a step back. Let's make sure that all that section works. No, 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 no. Is that a, a Debussy line? Doing some, you know, Photoshop down here. There it is. Beautiful. Oh, I'm talking about... Um, no, 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 no. Sounds like something... Claire de Lune. It probably is Claire de Lune. <laughs> It sounds like with the effects. effects are so cool. <laughs> Good stuff. Now it really sounds like a movie trailer. You start doing that kind of stuff. Playing classical music with modern effects. All right, just for fun, let's see what this sounds like. If I do give violins the same treatment and violas the same treatment, just to see if there's a way to to get that humanity into there. And this is where the real work is. Writing a few notes isn't the work, it's the production, honestly. This is the part that takes twice as long as writing, but this is also what separates pros from amateurs, is putting the time in here. That's where everything sounds meticulously good. Then last one, let me do viola, just to have it all in there if I want them. All the microphones set the way I like it. So 
for this thing. Maybe you can handle another octave? Let's see. heard something i heard tremolo strings that would be cool let's see what that sounds like uh let's start with violas because they're gonna get the, the brunt of the work here let's see if we can make that sound good possibly Possibly not. It's worth a shot. That's what I hear in my head. Alright, uh, viola, so many folder. Let's do spiccato. The shortest of the shorts. Either that or tremolo. Tremolo might be a little bit too much. Right? Oh, that's a really sucky spiccato. I was really hoping that'd be better. The cello one's good. The bass one's good. <laughs> wow, that's like bad. Let's see if East West can do any better. Sometimes. Sometimes it can do better. Not usually. Let's see what they have. Maybe this one. It takes a thousand years to load because, you know, East West, their engine is abysmal. I'm going to try a few. <clears throat> this has to be right. <laughs> This may not exist. 
because I'm hearing a real orchestra in my head and nothing's coming close. Maybe that mixed with this. Hmm. I'm going to get it, guys. Don't worry. as good as it's going to get folks all right with samples <laughs> that i own yes i do remember that robin actually sorcery. To really get this thing to fit. Cello short. Oh, so many folders. Give us a sec. You're rejoicing in your freedom to, <laughs> to scream. To scream at me with your all caps. All right. Cello's spiccato. These are really good. My favorite. I'll do my best to like duplicate this. That might help. Let's see what happens. <laughs> here without going overboard and the time suck here that goes into it I do want to finish this in one sitting that would be great I'd love to be done 
Hope this has been fun for you guys in some way. I never know. That one's really quiet. Not bad for not quantizing. to glue that together is to do some tremolo that just gave it some sense of rhythm but in this context it's just gonna it's gonna sound awful by itself that's why it's super masked that's just the nature of sampled instruments so i'm gonna try to do some tremolo fill in the gaps a little bit make sure yeah it's all set Let's see how poorly this will go me. Alright, let's move on. That took way too long. 
by turning down the music about 6 dB. to watch the whole thing to realize that nope everything else fits so well and then that comes in it feels cheap i think the music can be a little bit louder i think the pad can go down like Okay, cool. I think this end needs... One of those. One swell. Let me redo that. Not two. Let, let it roll. I like that. It's kind of soars to the end. Cool. Yeah, the strings was a mistake. <clears throat> Buy strings. Save. Oh, it hurts so good. The bus! <laughs> there guys I'm just kind of fine-tuning at this point it's looking right at me not for long
This was a mistake. We need to go. We need to find Icicle. So close, like 90% there. It's missing something right here in this beginning. Ah! The bus! <laughs> This. this has an abrupt stop, which I don't love. that squeaky distortion up top because it kind of gives it some grit in that moment. I got it! A kid's looking right at me! Not for long. I think something else I want to add, now that I've gotten rid of all this, uh, the short string stuff, the tremolo stuff, let's get rid of those. I want to add, I'm going to add some horns. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but I think it might. Yeah. 
Yep, that's all good. No, 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 no. Now I got clear loom stuck in my head. So here, orchestral, brass, I, I don't want to go too heavy into the heroic territory, but I'm thinking if I grab this. Let's see if this helps. Just to double something to give it even more. La, da, that minor sixth. Ya, na, na. Jacob, you gotta let the sound effects do their thing, and that's the appropriateness portion of this. Man, horns I don't like. Crazy. I thought I would. I really did. It's almost like we need one more synth, a brassy synth to really take it home. Something that's like really gonna be in our face. Let's try it. And then if it doesn't work, let's just wrap it, wrap it up and be done. Let's grab massive, it's very gritty synth. So this will be down here. This will be, um, let's just call it a massive synth. I want it brassy. Let's uh, turn our music back up. I know it's been a journey here. But we gotta have something here. It's just not right yet. Um, I guess it'll be here. It'd be brass.
the sound I needed because it mimics French horns instead I can uh, throw some stereo delay on there it's amazing how that blends so well so here we'll do quarters here we'll do eighths we'll do like 25 each let's see how that feels soloed That works so well. fit together so let's grab something very gritty maybe I don't even use the same sound <laughs> Omnisphere for this one. Omnisphere has really good fat basses. Typically for like techno and, and dance music. Which is why it would work well here. See, this is all just a fine tuning. This is like the last 5% that really makes a difference. It, it makes it feel full and rich. Which is what I want. So let's go into synth bass. speak Right at me. 
favorite plugin ozone which is fabulous simply fabulous oops i gotta move it this way so you guys can hear what i'm doing okay um so this is a mastering suite called ozone which is oh so fabulous because it can just do magical magical things to your work um so i want to try where would this feel the best? Probably stereo image or dynamics. Let's just kind of play for a second, see what it feels like.
good. Don't love that. I feel like that brightened it too much. Let me try this one. Otherwise, the whole thing will get all weirded. There we go. Now that makes a whole lot more sense. Sorry. The bus! I got it. friends so there we go um took about three hours but we knocked it out two minutes of scoring for dc star girl as part of the spitfire audio competition the scoring competition if that is something you would like to be a part of check out the link in the description and go submit your own entry um and let me know if you do that i'd love to check out yours as well um part of the fun of these competitions is to the collaboration part of getting to do this stuff together so hope you had fun with this i'm gonna play out one final time just the music portion um, I like that. I like blending the, the piano pad with uh, all of these synths, using a real synth as well as a uh, all these digital synths. Sometimes you just kind of need both. Um, it's cool to have some biting things and some warmer things and a lot of fun. I, I tried not to overwrite. It's easy to do in this context just to put a bunch of music, but you got to listen to what's going on in the story and let the sound and the, the dialogue and everything speak too. So I did not think I was going to do that without a click, um, without a tempo, but that kind of made it feel more organic and more interesting to me. Sometimes film scoring, you know, it's just better to do without click. Um, yeah. So let's listen to the final and then I'm going to export this sucker and get it submitted and put it on the YouTubes for you people to see, for the judges to see. So, See you guys next time. I will not see you tomorrow for the live composing show because that's what we're doing today. But I will see you next Thursday at the normal time, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard, every single week here on YouTube. Hope you guys have a fabulous week, weekend. And I'll see you next time. Let's play it out. Just the music part, which I think I have to do. How do I do that? <laughs> Hold on. I have to, solo. Uh, I have to mute the video audio. 
and then mute the MIDI tracks. Okay, we're ready. See you guys.